So today was the day that everyone was looking forward to, the September Nintendo Direct. What sort of surprises would Nintendo bring to the table and the Nintendo Switch? Well, the event just wrapped up. It was a 40-minute presentation, so we're just going to hop into it. But I definitely think that this is the most polarizing Nintendo Direct of all time, and we're going to talk about why as the show progresses. So if this is your first time on the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Be sure to like and share the video. But without any further ado, let's hop into this. So we started things off with Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak coming in 2022 to the Switch. Now this is essentially DLC for Monster Hunter Rise. It's a large expansion pack. This will be a paid DLC and it looks pretty dark. There's going to be new stories, new hunting actions, new monsters in it. It looks pretty cool, honestly, you know, kind of a weird way to start off a Nintendo Direct, but I guess it is what it is. Monster Hunter Rise is a fantastic game, still one of my game of the year contenders, but kind of a weird way to start things off. Then Mario Party Superstars was shown off next. Now, of course, I said in my predictions video that this game would be here. They showed off some of the courses and the mini games. Everything, of course, has online play in it. I think this is going to be a really fun game. It's actually a Mario Party game I'm looking forward to because Super Mario Party just, you know, it just wasn't all that good. And this game will be coming out on October 29th. Next up, they showed off a new RPG called Voice of Cards, and you can tell by the title, it's a card-based game. It's a tabletop RPG-style card-based RPG, and just, no, 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 thank you. I don't like card games. I've never liked card games. I never will like card games, so this was kind of a weird announcement. You know, this game is coming out on October 28th. There will be a demo available for it, but just, no thank you, no, no Voice of Cards for me. Then they showed off Disco Elysium Final Cut. Now, I have heard really good things about this game. It's a narrative-based sort of RPG-ish game where you play as a character who is basically like a detective and you're trying to solve different things going on. What you do in the game sort of impacts your character from things like looks to their demeanor. There's an upgrade system in the game. This game will be coming out on October 12th. The physical version will be hitting on 2022. So next year, you'll be able to pick up a physical version of the game. They also showed off some more Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity DLC, and honestly, I don't know, I couldn't get into this game quite as much as I got into the first Hyrule Warriors. Like, I guess it was just because with the original Hyrule Warriors, you were taking from every Legend of Zelda game, whereas this game, you could only take from Breath of the Wild. Now, I know a lot of people loved that it was a prequel to Breath of the Wild, so you got a lot of backstory with it, but things like performance issues in the game sort of hampered it for me as well, so I can't really get excited for this DLC. There's a DLC pack coming out on October 29th but i probably won't be checking it out and then Ch chocobo gp what excuse me this is a kart racing game featuring chocobo and other characters from final fantasy basically like sub characters and it has drifting there's items you can use on the characters when you're going around the course if you get the same item you can sort of stack them on top of each other to use bigger spells racers also have special abilities there's going to be online multiplayer and this game will be coming out in 2022 then they talked about super smash brothers ultimate who's the final character you're not going to find out today you find out on october 5th at 10 a.m am with a special presentation for this event so as i'm watching this direct i'm sitting here thinking this isn't good like it's not bad or anything like that but like where are the big games where are the fun announcements like the pacing of this just felt very weird and then all of a sudden nintendo was like hey let's crank it up a notch and talk about some good stuff and the first thing they talked about was a new kirby game now, evidently, this new Kirby game was spoiled before the Nintendo Direct, but I just kind of avoided the internet today because I felt like things would be happening like this. It is a 3D open world game called Kirby the Forgotten Land. The world itself looks very abandoned. There's like an abandoned mall that Kirby visits. I kind of got like the Last of Us vibes from this. Like, it kind of looked like Nintendo doing a Last of Us style game. This is a 3D pseudo open world game. I'm not sure how open it will actually be, but there's large areas you can explore playing as Kirby. Of course, you suck up your enemies and take their abilities i really liked what i saw from this game I, you know kirby games are always fun but i just wanted to see a 3d kirby game because it feels like we've gotten so many 2d ones as of late like 3d kirby has just disappeared since like what the n64 gamecube era so now to see kirby in a proper 3d game i think this game is going to be awesome there's big boss battles all sorts of cool stuff i am curious to see the difficulty of this game because kirby games used to actually be very challenging and there's as of late with games like like star allies has just been well like baby difficulty like super easy this game will be coming out in spring of 2022 and definitely was a highlight of the show for me an animal crossing direct is happening in october with details on new content for the game and speaking about new content mario golf super rush
Rush is getting some free content available today. You can download Koopa Troopa and Ninji as two new characters to play as, and there's going to be two new courses. Like I said, this is available today. It is free. So now we're starting to get to the completed version of Mario Golf Super Rush, because when this game came out, I'm sorry, it just wasn't very complete. Disney Magical World 2 Enhanced Edition, evidently this was like a 3DS game that's been ported over to the Switch. I didn't catch the release date for it, but basically you live in a world with Disney characters and sort of interact with them. I don't know, it looks okay, like it's Winnie the Pooh. I'd like to hang out with him, you know, eat some pizza and chill, you know, maybe go find some honey. I don't know. But this isn't a game, you know, really geared towards adults, I feel. It's probably for a younger audience, so I guess it's kind of cool. Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Now, this game has been getting a lot of press recently. Of course, during the latest PlayStation presentation, they announced that there would be a KOTAR remake of sorts that will be coming out for the PlayStation 5 as a timed exclusive. No sort of timetable. I think this game is light years away, uh, you know, no pun intended, but the original version of KOTAR is actually coming out on the Nintendo Switch with some HD graphics and this game will be available on November 11th so I think this is really good because it is a long RPG set within the Star Wars universe and there's a ton of stuff to do with it as well of course this originally was an Xbox game so nice to see it coming to the switch I'm sure it'll be available on other platforms but I feel like the portability of the switch will really help make the switch version of the game stand out and I'm sure limited run will do a physical version on down the line and speaking of surprises dying light 2 is coming to the Nintendo switch with a cloud version come on you didn't think you didn't think they were gonna put that game natively on the system did you know we'll use the power of the cloud i'm not the biggest fan of cloud-based games hitman 3 i played via the cloud and it was all right but this game definitely seems a lot more action orientated i haven't played dying light before but i will be picking up dying light platinum edition which comes out on october 19th for the nintendo switch because i want to get into this franchise it seems like something that i would enjoy but yes dying light 2 will be coming to the nintendo switch via the cloud this game will be releasing on february 4th there will be a free demo available so that way you can sort of check it out make sure your online is good enough so i'll probably check out the free demo in february when it comes out but dying light platinum edition i definitely will be picking that up because i wanted to sort of talk about this game with you guys and sort of see how the nintendo switch version of the game came out Triangle Strategy got some new information. Of course, this is the RPG, tactics-based RPG, coming to us from Square Enix. We got a release date of March 4th, 2022, and Square Enix basically has changed a bunch of stuff in this game based on consumer feedback from previous demo versions of this game. So I think that's a really good thing. Like, if your game isn't released yet and you release a demo and you say, you know, hey, tell us what you like about the game. Tell us what you don't like about the game. It really makes for a better experience because people can give you that sort of live feedback and then, you know, you can take that feedback back into consideration and do something with it so i think that's a really good thing you know it has that octopath traveler graphical style to it so if you're a tactics rpg fan you're definitely probably looking forward to this Metroid Dread got a trailer. Of course, Metroid Dread was going to be here. It comes out on October 8th. I think it looks great. You know, I look forward to being one of the 2.99 million people who buy this game because, I mean, it's not going to sell 3 million, but they showed off some story elements, some gameplay elements. It looks really fantastic, honestly. I love the different areas you visit and the different characters or creatures, I should say, that are within these areas. So October 8th can't get here soon enough, even though I'll be kind of like moving during then. I don't, I don't know how that's going to work out for me. And then, folks... And then Nintendo finally did something. They finally they finally dropped some bombs on us here with the Nintendo Switch Online service getting some updates. And we've been talking about this a lot on the channel recently, but now it is confirmed. A new membership plan is indeed coming to the Nintendo Switch with the N64. Yes, folks, the N64 is coming to the Nintendo Switch to the surprise of a lot of people because a lot of people felt like Nintendo wouldn't do this. Now, I've always been of the camp that I felt like they would and they are doing it. They showed some of the games, including Mario Kart 64, Super Mario 64, The Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time, Mario Tennis, Sin and Punishment, even Winback made it in and Winback was a game that I said was going to be on it on the spawn cast this past week that was that was a complete guess i didn't i, I just said went back because it kind of stood out from other games but here's the real kicker you're going to have online in this game with up to four people so you can play these games that have multiplayer in them online with other people for up to four people so mario kart 64 online 
yes like this is awesome this is exactly what i wanted nintendo to do because i feel like it's their strongest thing is their back catalog of games and their back catalog of systems they should have been focused on this putting it on the nintendo switch you know better late than never the inclusion of online is definitely very awesome the games themselves looked a little bit upscaled you know nothing crazy but it looked pretty crisp from the gameplay footage that they shown win back doesn't look nearly that clean when you play it on an n64 but this is absolutely awesome but that's not the only system that's coming also coming in this new membership tier is the sega genesis what excuse me sega genesis now of course you could pick up the sega genesis classics collection for a fraction of the price you know and get you know these games natively on one card but there's going to be different games that are, are on this that are not available on the sega genesis classics collection so this is really cool you know sega genesis games alongside of n64 games you've just doubled the library for the nintendo switch online service you've doubled the amount of systems that you have available on there from nes and super nes to now those systems plus genesis and n64 like absolutely awesome no sign of game boy whatsoever but you know what i'm fine with that you can wait on game boy if you want because i want to play some n64 games online with my friends now this will be coming in late october like i said pricing and uh, a concrete release date will be revealed a bit later i'm not quite sure what the pricing of this is going to be it's going to be interesting to see how nintendo does this you can upgrade your current nintendo switch online membership to get this better tier which i'll be doing on day one and there's actually genesis and n64 controllers coming as well that are wireless that you can use while playing these games so this was awesome it's nice to see nintendo finally taking the online service for real and actually putting an effort into this so this was a huge surprise for me and definitely one of the best if not the best announcements from the show. Then we got to look at Shadow Run Trilogy, which are cyberpunk RPG games from back in the PC days. I never really played them, but they're coming to the Switch. Castlevania Advance Collection. Yes, the oft-rumored collection of Castlevania Game Boy Advance games, plus Castlevania Dracula X from the Super Nintendo are included in this collection. There's a rewind feature, this quick save feature. There's going to be different regions that you can choose from in the games, and there's a gallery mode where you can check out different artwork and stuff, and it comes out today. So the second I finish up this video, I'll be grabbing my Switch and downloading this because I mean these games kick ass like they, they kick ass you everyone needs to buy this and you know show ca show Konami that we want more Castlevania stuff another surprise act razor resonance act razor act razor in 2021 excuse me if you've never played act razor it was a super nintendo game that was like half a god mode simulator game and half an action adventure 2d side scrolling game now this version of the game has gotten new graphics instead of the pixel style it's now looks sort of like the um ghouls and ghosts game or ghosts and goblins game that we just got from uh capcom the upgraded version of that there's going to be alternative versions of the soundtrack that you can change through there's going to be new stages new bosses this is also out today so that was a huge surprise prize like you know castlevania advanced collection act razor n64 sega genesis retro stuff like you do this more bring back more retro stuff everyone loves retro games and you're also introducing it into a new audience delta rune is coming i don't care about delta rune i went up and got a drink during this presentation so if you like delta rune you'll want to talk to someone else about it then we got a sizzle reel with hot wheels unleashed surviving the aftermath shimigami tensei 5 Wreckfest, which is a game that i'm actually going to check out because it's like destruction derby and i like destruction derby there's new arcade archives games coming such as pac-man and a harvest moon game is coming out in march of 2022 nothing really crazy in this sizzle reel it was nice to see hot wheels unleashed you know i think this game actually looks really cool you can build your own tracks and stuff like that i think this could be a sleeper hit of the month of september for the switch and just for all consoles in general then shiggy the emperor made an appearance yes shigeru miyamoto decided to bestow upon us his presence and talk about the mario movie looking at a holiday 2022 launch I don't like talking about movies and TV shows during my video game presentations, and this didn't change my mind. They showed some of the casting stuff. Chris Pratt is, is Mario, the dude from Jurassic World. Showed some other casting stuff. Charlie Day is Luigi. Jack Black is Bowser. Pretty good casting there. Keegan-Michael Keel is Toad. Seth Rogen is Donkey Kong, because he's going to be in the game too. Charles Martinet is involved with the project. He'll be doing cameo voices in it. Why the hell isn't Charles Martinet doing the voice of Mario? He is Mario. He's the Mario that we all grew up loving. Like, just 
just give him the full role. I don't know how I feel about this movie. I don't want movie stuff in my video game presentation, so, you know, whatever. Then it was Splatoon 3 time. It looks like Splatoon, you know, that's not a bad thing or anything like that, but obviously they are doing some things to improve upon it. I think the main emphasis on this game is the single player. Now, the single player in Splatoon 1 was crap. It was pretty much just a tutorial mode. Splatoon 2 was a bit better, but I think Splatoon 3 is actually going to have a deep single player experience with a variety of locations and sort of different gameplay elements so i am looking forward to that of course there's going to be new weapons new main weapons new special weapons and splatoon 3 you're still going to have that four on four online combat as well it looks really good honestly like it looks like splatoon but i think you know they're adding in enough stuff and doing enough improvements to make this game sort of stand out from previous splatoon games and this game will be coming out in 2022 no concrete release date or anything like that but i think this will be sort of an earlier 2022 title maybe summer 2022 and then it was time for the final game and if you watch my nintendo direct predictions video you know that i said there was one game that was sort of make or break for it if it's not at this direct presentation there's a big problem with this game and there's still maybe some issues with this game but we finally got to see it and that is bayonetta 3 yes bayonetta 3 ended the show evidently this was leaked as well but like i said i just pretty much avoided the internet today and like i said this was a definitely a do or die situation and it looks great I think it looks absolutely awesome. The doggo from Astral Chain made a cameo in the trailer, and then we got the gameplay. And I mean, it's Bayonetta. It's the combat system that we all love. Fast, frantic, fluid, furious. There's a little alliteration for you guys, but it just looks so good. It looks like you could fight alongside of the summons now. The summons are like the big creatures that you see fighting alongside of Bayonetta, and usually you would control the summon, but now it looks like you can also fight alongside of the summon to make, you know, even deeper combos and deeper sort of things that you could do within the combat system so that looks awesome i thought the graphics looked really good you know there was like destructible environments they didn't really show many environments that bayonetta will be in but it definitely looked really good bayonetta herself still looks amazing like if i could find a chick that looks like bayonetta i think i might marry her you know that's just like my style you know i like dark hair i like the shorter girls though i'm only like 5'10 so i like shorter girls with dark hair you know little glasses and stuff like that but bayonetta's hot man i i, I definitely would I definitely would. But yes, Bayonetta 3, I really liked what we saw from this game. But there are still some questions about it because this game was, of course, announced in 2017 and it still doesn't have a release date. They gave a 2022 release window for this game. I still think there's some weird stuff happening at Platinum, but it was just nice to finally see this game, to finally see gameplay from this game. And so that was a great way to end the show. So what did I think of this Nintendo Direct presentation? Personally, I loved it, but I could definitely see it being very polarizing for a lot of people because if you didn't really you know, care about games like Bayonetta or you weren't a fan of Kirby, there really wasn't a lot of stuff here for you. For me personally, Kirby definitely stood out. The Castlevania Advance Collection definitely stood out. Bayonetta 3 stood out. And of course, the addition of new consoles coming to the Nintendo Switch Online service was just, oh man, it was so good to see that. But I feel like there was, you know a lot of stuff for me personally but for other people like maybe there wasn't stuff here you didn't get something like xenoblade chronicles 3 you didn't get something like breath of the wild and these were games that people are looking forward to so i could see this being very polarizing if games like kirby didn't really hit with you then there really wasn't that much in terms of surprises but whenever i look at a nintendo direct i always say there's three things i want i want updates on games i already know about i want surprise game announcements that i don't know about and i want stealth drops of stuff and this presentation gave me all three of those things with games like Kirby, you know, games like uh, Bayonetta 3 getting an in-depth update, and of course, stealth drops of games like Castlevania Advance Collection. I think the N64 and Genesis Online stuff, that just was, you know, they could have just took a dump for the rest of the presentation. It could have been Shiggy just sitting there reading a newspaper, taking a dump, and I would have been happy because that's what I wanted to see, the expansion of the Nintendo Switch Online service. But if you don't care about stuff like that, if you only buy a Nintendo Switch to play, you know, new Nintendo Nintendo games you might be a little bit disappointed from this presentation so be sure to sound off in the comments section down below because this was definitely a very polarizing event and I want to hear your guys' feedback on it and as always guys thank you for checking out this video if you are new to the channel be sure to hit that subscribe button be sure to like and share the video as well and as always I'll catch you guys on the next one later